Let's learn how to use the loft feature in Fusion 360. My name's Adam James and be sure to like and subscribe for jumping right on in. So as always, we'll jump right on into Fusion 360. As you see here, we're gonna start with kind of a vase example. Uh, this is one of the more complex examples that I think we'll work towards in this tutorial. Uh, you can see there's a lot of sweeping features, a little more complex than what we're able to accomplish with say just simple extrusions in Fusion. Uh, and then we'll kind of start from something a little simpler like this, right? So we've got some square features, no rounds. Um, and, and the overall goal here is to achieve something where you've got, say, a smaller feature on the bottom, or say, a sketch down here, uh, and a larger feature up top. And then we'll we'll go through and try maybe a, a different geometry sketch on the bottom, and then a, a different geometry on the top, uh, and then something a little more complex uh, with a square geometry and then kind of a spline curvature. And then we'll go into how to use chain-driven commands to actually get the features to follow a path that you design. So what we'll do is we will start with a new design here. We'll just left click on sketch at the top left, sketch on the top plane here, and then we'll just do a simple rectangle. So we'll go to center rectangle, we'll click in the center here and left click escape, D for dimension, left click, and we'll just do 50 millimeters, hit enter, and then left click and 50 millimeters, enter. And then we can hit escape and finish sketch. So now we've got our first sketch for the loft feature. The next step is to create a uh, offset plane. So we'll just select the same surface plane that we just created our sketch on. And then we will maybe enter 100 millimeters here and then hit enter. That looks pretty good. Uh, this is all dependent on the design that you want to create, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be 100 millimeters offset. This is just going to be the distance that the top loft plane feature is going to reference. So we'll left click on this plane that we just selected. If you don't see it, you can select construction over here in the plane. Uh, and then we will, okay, left click and then click sketch. And then... I don't want to redraw that, so just P for project, left click all these lines that we just made, and then click OK, and then O for offset on the keyboard. And you can left click, and I'm using a Mac, so it's Command Select the rest of these. I think it's Control Select if you're on a PC. Uh, and we'll just kind of drag this, I don't know, let's make it maybe 20 millimeters, and hit Enter. And you can shift middle click to rotate and just check to make sure that this looks correct. That looks pretty good. Uh, and we don't actually want these to be solid lines. So click each one of these, left click each one, and then hit X to make it a construction line. X, X, and X. Left clicking on each before hitting X. And then we'll just finish sketch. So this is essentially going to turn into this guy. So let's go back here. Um, before we go further, let's just save it so we don't lose any of our progress. Call this loft YouTube example and hit enter. Okay. And then we'll go up here to create a loft. Uh, I don't think it selected it. Create loft. Okay. And then you can left click on the smaller sketch that you created at the bottom and then you can left click on the top one. You don't have to hold command um, for this to actually work. It'll populate in this profile tree uh, in this loft window. So this looks really good, uh, super simplistic. Looks like it's gonna work, right? We'll click okay and boom, that is our vase. Our very simplistic kind of board. It almost looks like a, a plant potter or something. Uh, and it, if you wanna get a little fancy, you can you know shell it out. So you can click shell here and then left click on this top surface and maybe just do two millimeters for the shell and hit enter. And that is our first loft example, pretty simplistic. So let's go ahead and do this same thing again, but we'll use two different uh, geometries. Uh, let's just make sure. Yeah, so we'll do a circle on the bottom just to verify that you can do this 
with two different geometrical sketches. So we'll left click on sketch at the top left, left click on the top plane here, will be very similar commands here, C for circle, click on the origin here, and then left click again, escape, D for dimension, left click on the circle, and then we'll just make it 50 millimeters again, hit enter, and then escape, all is well, we'll hit finish sketch, and then we can do shift middle click, let's do offset plane again, I'll go a little quicker through this because we've already done this. Again, this is going to be 100 millimeters. So we'll hit enter and then left click and create sketch. And then we'll go to, we're actually going to uh, place a rectangle on the top here instead of a circle because remember we're using two different geometries. So escape, D for dimension, left click, left click. Uh, maybe we'll make this 100 millimeters wide, 100 millimeters tall, simple square, left click on finish sketch, shift middle click, we'll go back to our loft command, and then again, just select the two shapes, select OK, we can shell this, uh, make this two millimeters, again, this is, this is pretty quick, like, it's pretty fast, so in order to kind of demonstrate, I guess, another example, um, a little more difficult is going to be this, um, this vase. So this will be uh, like a spline and then we'll mirror it and then we'll have like a simple square on the bottom. So let's jump right on into that. So we'll make a new one, save it beforehand, spline, loft, enter. Okay, great. And then we'll left click on create sketch and we'll left click on the top plane, uh, create rectangle, center rectangle, left click on the origin, and then left click and escape. D for dimension, left click, left click, 50 millimeters, left click, left click, 50 millimeters, enter, escape, all right. And then we'll finish the sketch. Shift, middle click, offset another plane. Again, we'll just do this consistently at 100 millimeters, enter. And then let's sketch up here. Okay, so this is where it's going to become a little more complex just to prove that this does work very well with uh, some complex geometrical uh, sketches. So we'll left click, left click, first circle. I did C for circle, right? D for dimension. Oops, let's get out of that. D for dimension, left click on the circle, and we'll just make this maybe 150 millimeters in diameter. It should be fine. And then what we're gonna do here uh, is L for line, click on the origin, just make sure that is um, vertical. You can kind of see this um, shows that it's vertical. L for line again, origin, and then left click escape. And we'll click on both of these and hit X and X so that they are construction lines. And that is all good to go, okay. So let's do, actually, let's make one more construction line. And you'll see why I'm putting this here. Click on the origin and left click again, escape, D for dimension. Let's select this line and this line and then left click again and make this 45 degrees. This is just so that this line is in the middle of these two if we're following uh, the circumference of the circle. So let's left click again and make this a construction element Okay, all is good. So the next step is to do a fit point spline. All right, and then we will left click on fit point spline here at the top left, and then we'll left click on this intersection between the circle and this horizontal construction line. Just left click, and then we'll left click kind of in the middle, and then we'll left click on the intersection between this 45 degree line that we made and the circle. So left click, and then left click on this check mark, check mark to the left and then hit escape. Great, okay. And then what we'll do is left click on tangent, left click on the spline, and then command left click or control left click, depending on if you're on a Mac or PC. And you'll see that that makes this tangent to the circle that we just created. And then we'll hit escape, left click on tangent again. We'll do the same thing on, actually, really quick. Hit escape, go over to line, 
and create a line that is perpendicular and I'll purposefully make it not perpendicular, left click and left click, hit escape. And to ensure that it's perpendicular, you can go up to this constraint up here in the toolbar, left click on perpendicular, left click and left click on the construction line and now we have a perpendicular line. Left click on that line and hit X for construction. Now the reason that we're doing this is so that we can then make a tangency between this spline and this construction line. So let's do left click on the spline, command left click on the construction line, and now it's tangent. So you can see it's following or it's tangent to this line if it were to continue on. And the reason we do that is because if we want to mirror this, it means it's going to look very pretty and the curves are going to be tangent to each other when they're mirrored. So that's the sole purpose. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll left click on the spline, we'll go up to create mirror. Oh, maybe it didn't select it. Create mirror, left click and left click. Okay, great. And then that object is already selected. So let's select left click on mirror line field. You'll notice that it populates or it shows blue. And then we can select this construction line that we created earlier and then we'll click OK. So that looks great. And then we will select that spline again and then command select or control select that spline and we're gonna mirror it once again. So we want this spline to basically pattern all the way around the circle. So we'll click on mirror, select the mirror line that you wanna select. We've already created that line. It's this horizontal line, construction line and just left click on that and then click OK. Great. And we'll do this once again to mirror all of these. So command left click on all of those splines that we just mirrored. And we do it one last time and we'll just select mirror. Select the mirror line. It's this vertical line that we created earlier. Select that and then select OK. Boom. It's great. And then let's left click on the circle and then hit X to make it a construction line. And now the only solid uh, sketch geometry we have is all the splines that we created. And we will do finish sketch. Great. So that's kind of cool, a little more complex than the simplistic shapes that we were using earlier. So let's try to do a loft now. So we'll go to create, go down to loft, left click, and left click and we'll do OK. Now what you'll notice is it kind of automatically drives the surfaces and the lines that are driving this shape on the bottom to this shape at the top. That's, I mean, that's cool and all, that's fine. Um, it actually looks pretty good and Fusion does a really good job at this without having to define a chain to drive this loft for you. Um, and most people would be okay with that, but you know, if you're making a vase, you kind of want it to go in a little bit and out. So let's actually show how we would create a self-driven chain for that loft to follow. So what we'll do here, because I don't want to recreate this again, we'll just open up our panel on the left hand side. And I named this spline loft. Okay, it's right here. So we'll right click on this and you can do this as well and just do copy and just select copy. Great. And then right click and left click on rename. And just do maybe chain driven is how I will define that. Oh, actually that's the other one. Well, that's okay. As long as we have a copy, we can work in this one. All right, so now let's create the chain driven sketches that we need uh, for this operation. So what we'll do is at the bottom here, we'll just scroll in the history timeline by um, holding down your left mouse button so that it goes before this, um, this loft feature that we created. And then in the feature tree, we can go to sketches or the sketch tree, I guess. And then we can show these by selecting um, the eye icon just shows the sketches that we just created. And then we also want to show the origin. 
So this is what we're going to do. If you'll notice this plane here, and that happens to be the YZ plane, or the, the left plane, what we want to do is we want to create a sketch that essentially connects this dot to the bottom of this dot at the bottom of the sketch that we created previously. So let's go ahead and show what this looks like. So left click on sketch, sketch on this kind of right plane here. And then we want to, we'll make it even complex with a, a spline. So we'll do fit point spline, so left click on that. Actually, before we do that, hit escape. And then you can shift middle click and we want to make sure that we're projecting something to reference so that we can actually select these in our sketch. So what we'll do is P for project, select this line back here, and then also select this point at the top. Left click and left click and select OK. And we can create our sketch normal to the axis again just by selecting this left face up here. Now we're normal to the plane of the sketch and let's hide the origin. So we'll left click on that in the tree over here. And now we can sketch. So you can left click on fit point spline, left click. We'll make another point here, left click. We'll make one more point here, left click. And then this final point so that it's uh, coincident with this top line and we will left click as well. And then we'll left click on the green check mark to create and continue and then we'll hit escape. So similar to what we did earlier, we will left click on this line at the top and then left click in the very center origin and then we'll left click, hit escape, hit X on the keyboard. Actually, let's do it the other way. Hit X again on the keyboard to deactivate that. Left click on the line and then hit X, hit escape. And then we're going to create two more lines. So left click on line at the top. You can also do L on the keyboard. And we'll click on this point at the bottom right. Left click, left click. Make sure that it's perpendicular to this horizontal axis. Hit escape, L for line. And then left click on this top right point. And just in case you didn't do it, I'll do an example, right? Maybe it wasn't perpendicular, so we left click. I know it's 107 degrees, it's not 90, so we can fix that left click on perpendicular, left click on the line we just created, and then, well, this is a good example, because how do you fix that? Uh, we can create a horizontal line from that point, left click, or maybe your horizontal line was also not um, horizontal. You can also go to this, select horizontal vertical, and you've got a horizontal line, I can create this line perpendicular to that one by left clicking both and then hit escape. Just a little tips and tricks along the way, right? All right, so left click on both of these and then hit X to make them a construction. Make this bottom one a construction as well by left clicking and selecting X and hit escape. And then we'll left click on tangent, left click on the line, this vertical construction line we just created as well. Now they are tangent. You can see a little tangent icon and we'll do the same thing down here. So left click on the spline, left click on this line and then hit escape. Boom. So this is where you can kind of just play around um, with how you want this spline to look. I kind of want it to come in a little bit um, and be a little funky. I think that looks good to me. Maybe a little more. Okay, that looks good and then just left click on finish sketch. Actually, we gotta go back into the sketch. So right click on this in the history timeline, left click on edit sketch, and we have one last step for this sketch. Left click on this, spline, and then left click on create, and left click on mirror. And then again, we have to select the mirror line we wanna reference, so that's this construction line. It populates over there on the left, and then we select okay. Now what we're going to do before we exit the sketch as well, left click on this spline and then command left click on the left spline. So they're both selected and then do command C or control C if you're on PC and do finish sketch. So they're copied to our keyboard. We can hit escape now. 
So let's shift middle click around so we can look at what's going on here. So you can kind of get a gist of what this is actually doing. It's kind of this like bound of what ideally we would like fusion to follow when it creates the loft. But in order to create it a little more symmetrically, I like to do it on um, all four sides. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create one more sketch. Um, on this plane, so this back plane here, the front plane. So due to the fact that this is the same origin location, what we can do is Command V, and it will paste the sketch that we just did, that we just created, and we can select OK. Now that's Control V if you're on PC, and then we'll just select Finish Sketch. So that makes it really easy. This looks pretty complex from, from just a sketch component, right? But we're actually going to have a like a really cool looking body just from having these sketches together in one command, right? One command can create this vase geometry, which is really cool to, to see Fusion have this, this feature built in. So let's go to create. We will then select loft. Uh, we'll select the the bottom square that we sketched earlier, and then we'll select the top um, spline um, shape that we made. And then what you'll see here in the right hand side of this loft window is there is this rail section. And so there's a selection here to add a rail. So we'll left click on that. And then we will select one of the rails that we made. <laughs> so this is kind of cool. I mean, maybe like an abstract art piece, right? If you wanted to <laughs> leave it like that, sure, go for it. But I'm just going to finish this up and, and we'll do it symmetrical around. So uh, I'll left click on add rail again, add another rail that we created. So you can see it's kind of cleaning it up and following the curvature of those paths that we want it to follow. We'll add another rail. We've got four rails to add. Left click on the rail again. And then our last rail, left click and left click. And there we go. And we'll select OK. Left click on OK. Let's hide all of the sketches in the tree here. Uh, and then we can kind of take a look at what we've made. I mean, this is pretty complex. I mean, for just a single loft feature to make, oh, and, and we can shell it, let's just do that. Left click on shell, left click on the top surface, we can enter two, hit enter, and that is all set to go. That is our vase. Yeah, and just like that, we used a single loft feature with some, with four different sketches and an offset plane to create a, Super simple yet pretty complex uh, vase. If you all found this video helpful, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.